Hey everyone, it's Dyeworm with a roundup. It's been a while, I hope you enjoy it. Here we go. CG Project Red shared a sneak peek into their upcoming patch 1.2, which was delayed because of a cyber attack on their own systems. Cybersecurity is a different beast than cyberpunk, it seems. The new update features an overhauled police AI. They won't appear immediately after you shoot someone, but more gradually make their way towards the crime scene. And maybe they'll be smarter as well by not losing sight of you when you run away in a straight line. Who knows? Vehicles will be easier to control, which is sorely needed. There are mods currently to fix that issue, however, but ideally the game itself is just decent. Cars will get a feature to unstuck themselves because they tend to get stuck in objects and to the side of the road. And dodging, while double tapping a movement key, can now be turned off in the keybind menu. Once again, I already installed a mod for this on day 2 that fixed this issue for me. This is probably the most uneventful patch I've covered in a while. There's really nothing exciting here. Maybe there's more to the patch than this. They mentioned that these are only some of the changes, but damn, this doesn't look good. The Outriders demo launched a while back and the devs have been hard at work fixing all sorts of issues. This game is supposed to launch on April 1st, but it does have its fair share of known bugs, random issues like inventory wipes, a bunch of players with game crashes and even entire design flaws like non-working cover and janky controls that may need to be addressed before the game is in launch state. I'm not sure they can get away now with delaying another time, probably not, but be aware that Outriders isn't all that polished just yet, and delaying might actually be a good idea. I tried to play some co-op yesterday with a buddy and we couldn't get it to work. I also crashed two times and had to close down Steam to fix it. There's a lot of work to do because if this is there at launch, which is roughly 10 days from now, these guys aren't going to have a great launch day. And because it is only 10 days from now, it's actually safe to say that launch day is most likely going to be a mess. You might want to wait a bit with your purchase until everything is actually working. That doesn't mean it isn't fun however. I've played a few hours of the demo and it's really fun. The devs themselves are also very transparent about everything and their intentions seem good. I don't think this game is worth 60 bucks however. I think it will be too shallow, lacking endgame and overall not enough depth to the whole thing. But who knows, it already is on Xbox Game Pass at launch and I really hope we will see it on Game Pass for PC as well. Torchlight 3 Studio Extra was bought by Zynga Games, a big publisher that produces mobile games like Farmville. Torchlight 3 is pretty much a mobile game for all intents and purposes and originally it was called Torchlight Frontiers which was a free to play game until our lord and savior Max Schaefer realized that even he couldn't get away with butchering the franchise this much. Back to Zynga, a quick look at their revenue last quarter shows us that 97% of their $595 million revenue came from mobile games. So it seems Extra gets their wish after all and they will be making mobile games in the future for real this time. Some last epoch news, because community manager Sarno has been teasing stuff already despite the new patch being quite some time off. New chunky werebear and spriggenart, look at these guys, it's pretty nuts honestly how thick these are. The post says the spriggan has a more human looking face, I don't know about the humans in Texas, but uh, this looks good though. Wolson released a statement about upcoming changes they want to implement gradually into the game. The devs are looking at controller support, champion of stormfall improvements with higher levels and better gear, pets that automatically pick up gold for you, loot filter improvements that allow for more specific filters, summoned improvements making summoned creatures skill with more modifiers and giving you more control over them etc etc. Crafting will be improved as well and finally the dodge roll mechanic will have you roll through enemies by default. No more specking into slipping shadow is required which will be turned into a buff. I like the change a lot actually. Early access game Banners of Ruin, a PvE deck builder, received a big update. The several archetypes in the game have been made more distinct by giving them their own class specific abilities. You can unlock those by playing the game. In that sense, it's got some roguelike elements. Unlocking new characters will be more gradual as well. Before, you could basically encounter all classes in the first tavern, and now it is a more streamlined experience to help new players, which seems like a good idea. An endgame cutscene was added as an additional payoff for completing a run. Furthermore, there is a new elite squad, Captain Grit Salt. There's more opening variety and some choices to make the start of each run a bit different. New backgrounds and scenarios are implemented, and cards and passive have been overhauled. I really enjoy the occasional run of this game and I got it a while ago. 
If you're interested in some of the games I personally really like, you can check out my store on the Nexus. Link in the card in the description. It supports the channel and the devs. 2021 may be the year of the return of the demo. Outriders has some big successes with it, with millions of downloads, and Arborea now released one as well. It's a roguelike game with trolls that I played when it launched, and it was janky and unpolished. This was a while ago though, so it might be a lot better. If you're interested in this, have a go. It's free. I may have missed a stone shard update or two, but these these devs keep going and going with their early access game. This is a really good product already and it's still in early access. The next big update will feature saving on exit, killable PCs in random encounters, new locations, rivers, steam achievements and a loot. Solar Perch deployed update 0.2.3. This top-down action RPG early access game needs a lot more work in order for it to be an actual compelling game, but after a slow start the updates are now steadily rolling in. This time they got a new training ground to test out some gear, adjustments to enemy spawns in the holo chamber so they don't swarm the players as much and stick more to set locations, there are two new sandbox modes and a bunch of bug fixes. Let's look at some recent releases. The Outer Worlds, Murder on Eridanos, the second expansion of this game released. Halkion's beloved ether wave serial actress is found dead at the Grand Colonial Hotel just before the launch of Rizzo's Spectrum Brown Vodka. With everyone at the scene a potential suspect, can you and your crew uncover the truth? Follow the killer's trail with the discrepancy amplifier, an amazing device that uses the power of science to reveal clues across early Donalds. This DLC offers a low key whodunit and this is the final DLC available for this game, apparently. Endzone, a world apart got out of early access. It is a post-apocalyptic survival city builder where you start a new civilization with a group of people after a global nuclear disaster. Build them a new home and ensure their survival in a shattered world, threatened by constant radiation, toxic rain, rainstorms and droughts. It's got a 78% positive rating on Steam. About a month ago, Curse of the Dead Gods left early access as well. It's an amazing dungeon crawler roguelike game. I spent around 10 hours in the early access and have been very impressed with this. And so have the Steam users, giving it an 87% rating. Very positive. You can get it for 20 bucks and I would say that is definitely worth it. Then, upcoming releases? It's very quiet, actually. The first game of note is Outriders April 1st. Hopefully the game or the date isn't a joke when it releases. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all soon-ish. Love you all. Bye bye.